number components which you add 3D text to selections of components or groups or selections that contain a mixture of groups and components. It also lets you rename the instance name of components but we'll get back to that later. So first of all select some components, right click and choose number components from the context menu. And first of all I'm just going to click on number components and leave all the settings as they are and it numbers them. So here's the settings. The first one is font which is new for version 1.1 and I'm going to change that to Courier. It'll depend whatever fonts you have installed in your system what you see here. So I'm pressing Command Z to undo and then click on number components again and that's the different font and change the style to bold, undo, and then click on number components. Undo italic, undo bold italic, and then I'm going to put it back to bold again and draw it one more time. So that's font style, text height is in whatever unit you've got set here, it's in millimeters. So I'm going to make it 200 high, and I've left the old one there, so I'm just going to undo twice and then click again to do the new one. That's a bit big for those boxes. And undo, and do a small one, 25 high. That's too small. Go back to 100. The height is in the Y direction, which is the green axis on SketchUp. So that's height, which this extension calls up going towards the top of the screen and the red axis which is the X axis is left and right which will be used later on in this direction here and the extrusion if you don't want it to extrude you just set that to zero so undo and extrude and remember it's to have something selected if it extrudes by zero you'll just see a flat shape and that's that pink colour is the back face of the style I've got chosen. So undo, put the extrusion height back to 20 and change it now to inches. So have 4 inch height and 1 inch extrusion. Undo quick number components and that's enough inches. I'm going to go back to metric again. 125 extrusion. Undo number. The direction is probably the most complicated bit to get your head around. It has two words. Uh, the first word is the major direction and the second one is the minor. So down right means the major one is down. So it, And that's what setting was used for this. So it starts at the top and ends up at the bottom. And the minor direction tells you what direction it goes in each row. So down it starts top to bottom and right means left to right. So it does each row left to right and it goes back to the next row left to right. The next one is down left, undo number components. So it still starts at the top and ends up at the bottom but this time it starts at the right and goes to the left for each row and then the next row it starts at the right again and so on. Up right, now it's starting at the bottom and going to the top and the second word tells you the direction of the row. So left to right on each row and top uh, bottom to top overall. Up left the major direction is the same but now it starts each row at the right and goes to the left. Right down major direction is right or right to left and the minor is down so it starts at the, at the left and ends up at the right and each row starts at the top and ends up at the bottom right up is the same major direction but it starts at the bottom and goes to the top for each row each row is going up and each column uh, the columns start at the left and go towards the right left down and the major direction is left so it starts at the right one's at the right and 36 is at the left and each row goes down and the last one left up the major direction is left again but this time these rows going up. 
and there's also another option for each of those which is flip alternate rows so now well when that's off the direction down right starts at the left on each row goes to the right then starts at the left again but if you flip alternate rows undo and click that again starts at the left and goes to the right but instead of jumping back to the left it just drops down to the next row where it is and then goes back the way so every second row every odd row the first the third and the fifth and so on row is what is the same as the direction you choose here and the even rows are the opposite so it snakes back and forward all the way down so you've got the flipped version of all these settings but I won't go through all them you can try them yourself the next one is numbering 1 to n is what I've been using so far it just gives a number on each uh, component the next one is a1 to zn uh, I've forgotten to select something again each row has a, a letter prefix so it starts with A and then the next row gets B and then, and then each element is each component is numbered in the row and so on down to ZN text then uh, you put a text prefix in this box here and that is the only time that's used you can put something in that when the number is set to a different setting but it will be ignored but you can it will also be saved though so if you want if you if there's something used or what you can leave it there it, but it will only get used when the this numbering is set to text n if you number that it puts an a before everyone or or an x or whatever you want or a word undo number and it doesn't have to be a grid it can have gaps in it and then each component could be at different height and it'll put the text on top of each component whatever height it's at so this is down right so it's each row is going left to right so it gets to 12 13 14 and then 15 is over there after the gap and to 18 and the gap to 19 The next one is uh, next number and option is definition n. That takes the definition of the component, the definition name, which for these ones it's all square. And then n means puts a number after it. So I'll select them all. Definition n. There's still an x in there, but that's been ignored. So I'll just call them all square or something. The text is too big, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller changing the height undo uh, yeah it's maybe a bit too small or too big ok definition with no numbering what that is doing is taking the, the definition from each component so these geometric shapes have been given a definition name that matches their shapes that's a hex a square with a select a circle and octagon and so on so select them all and change the numbering to definition no numbering it doesn't put a number on it it just takes a definition name and pl places that as 3D text on the top of each object. Uh, I'll just make that a bit bigger. And the last one, the last number and option is rename component. So whatever setting you have here, just say number in one end or text then and I could call them hex and I'm putting a space so there's a space between the text and the number and if I left that as 3D text and selected them and quick number of components it puts hex 1, hex 2 and so on after it 
and I don't want to do that though, so I'm undoing. So instead of pushing 3D text, I'm going to rename the components. So if I click number components now, when I've selected them again, you won't actually see anything happening on, on the screen because it's changed the components. So you have to look in the entity info and it's called that hex 5. The instance names change to hex 4, hex 3 and so on. This could be, I'm just going to save the SketchUp file. You don't have to have SketchUp Pro to do this, but if you do, and you send it to layout, uh, and you use the label tool with uh, using the component instance name, then it would auto automatically uh, put these numbers in, or the text, or whatever you put in from SketchUp. It's not essential to have Layout and SketchUp Pro to use this extension, but if you do, that that kind of explains what the point of renaming the the instance name is for. And so that's all the number in the prefix with a prefix we've already covered in text n and number two 3D text or random component. You've got to remember to put that back. If you think it's not working, it's probably because you forgot to put it back to 3D text. You can change the first number if you want to start at 100 or whatever. And I forgot to change it back to 1 again. Undo it. So it starts at 100. Flip alternate rows, we've already done that. Keep window open, that's what I put on all the time in this demo which is handy for trying out lots of different settings or for when you make mistakes like I do. But if you don't want that and you just want to do it once and you know what you're doing, you leave that unticked and when you click on number of components the window will close and you'd have to open it up every time you want to use it. And reset puts it back to the default settings. The font will go back to the first one in your list, whatever it is. Update fonts will force it to read the fonts again from the operating system which can take quite a long time on the Mac uh, about 6 maybe 10 seconds so don't do that unless you've uh, just installed some new fonts and you want to use them okay thanks for watching